Greetings, everyone. Welcome back to the East End Productions Archive Studio. It's November 2023. The days are getting shorter. They're getting colder. And we are on a tape capturing binge right now. And if you've ever wondered what it takes to capture videotape to a digital signal, you're going to find out. In fact, I'm capturing this tape right now. Let's take a look at what we're doing here. It's a very cool process. It's time consuming, it's tedious, but uh, it uh, is a very rewarding thing. I'm coming across tapes that we shot decades ago with material that I've totally forgotten about. So we are gonna show you how we capture analog video to digital, and we're gonna start right now. So a good place to begin here is with the source, and that is the uh, videotape machine. This one happens to be a uh, Sony VO5600. We uh, recently had it rebuilt along with two other ones. We've got a total of three Umatic VTRs in our studio so that we uh, always have a backup in case something goes wrong with one of them. These things are old. You know, they're, they had their heydays back in the 80s as well, back in the analog era. They require maintenance. Uh, in many cases, the ones that have been sitting around have to be completely rebuilt. Uh, they need to be used. They need to stay active and uh, the longer they sit the more problems they develop. Moving on from the uh, videotape machine is our capture card. Now, there's a lot of cheap capture cards out there for VHS but we use this Pinnacle Studio capture card. It was one of the first ones that was ever really produced and we use it primarily because it's built around the 720 by 480 format that VHS and Umatic uses. The modern capture cards, they're all in a higher resolution and they capture these, these old videos at a higher resolution. And when they do that, it just really uh, pronounces all the artifacts and all the, all the flaws on the video. Whereas if you capture it at its native state, the 720 by 480, you have much better picture quality. The next step is the actual capture program. We use OBS Studio. OBS Studio is a free software. A lot of guys use this for live streaming, but it is also an excellent program to capture video with. From the capture program, the next place the video signal goes is to our waveform monitor. Now the waveform monitor, the best way for those of you who are into photography, the best description I can give you for this device in modern terms is a histogram. It really provides a great deal of exposure control. The color side of the equation is managed by the vector scope. Now the vector scope gives us our color references and we can adjust the tint, we can adjust the color level, the saturation, the reference point that we use are the color bars and that is the reference that we use to set our vector scope and our waveform monitor. If we get those values dialed in then we pretty much have a real excellent baseline for the video and uh, then from there we've got that baseline that we can tweak one way or another if we need to. The next place that the uh, video goes, the video signal, goes to our time base corrector. And this is really probably the most important machine that we've got for quality video capturing. The TBC, it adjusts video levels, it adjusts color levels, it uh, adjusts color saturation. If you do your own video capturing, try to find yourself a time-based corrector. And the, even with the VHS, you will get some really, you'll get much better results. All right, from the time-based corrector, the signal goes to our hard drives. We have a four terabyte hard drive on our computer here and that's where the captured images go and they are huge files. A 20 minute pneumatic tape usually averages about a gig of data and then once we get them onto our hard drive onto our computer then we send them over to four different uh, external hard drives that we keep in various locations so that all of our video material isn't in one spot. 
I mentioned the tediousness of capturing video, and in our case, the tedious part of it is entering the information that's on the tape into our database so that we can search for specific items. Uh, if you look from left to right, we have the tape number, we have the date that the tape was captured, we have the external hard drives that the footage was saved on, you have the date that the tape was originally shot or started, and then at the bottom you have the date that the tape was finished. So most of the days the tapes are shot completely on the same day, but in some cases it spans a couple of days. So that's where those dates come in handy. And then of course in the comments you have all the details that's on the video. And all of this stuff is searchable. For example, uh, Rio Grande. If I wanted to find uh, Rio Grande 5413, all I'd have to do is type in DRGW5413 and it'll tell me every place that we've shot that engine and what tapes they are on, what hard drives they're on. It's just an excellent way of uh, keeping track of all this stuff. With all the tapes that we have in our archive, this database is just immensely useful. There's no way we could commit all this to memory. Anything that we've got in this database we can search for, and that is just tremendously useful. So that's where the tediousness comes from, from our standpoint of uh, capturing our videotapes. And I strongly recommend that if you capture videotapes, take this extra step, log your videos into a database so that you know where to find them, where they're stored, and this is an excellent thing to do with your slide collections as well. So yes, it's tedious, but man, is it ever worth it. Well, that kind of gives us a real good overview of what it takes to capture this footage. As I start capturing these tapes, I look at stuff that I've totally forgotten about and thinking, man, that was shot 30 years ago, 35 years ago. It's hard to believe how fast the time flies nowadays, but uh, it does fly and we have to fly with it. If you capture your own video, I sure would like to know how you do it. The whole purpose of all of this is for historic preservation. The stuff in our library and even the stuff that people are shooting today, that's going to get rare someday. That's going to become historic. All right, well, that's going to do it for our video capture program. I hope you enjoy it. I am going to get back to editing programs for you guys. So like and subscribe and thank you for watching.